In this video, I'm illustrating determination of business tax liability. And I'm going to explain two approaches which can be used to determine the business tax liability after determining income tax of the business. The first approach starts with the net profit, which has been determined according to the financial statements. This method is applicable, therefore, when financial statements, especially statement of profit or loss of a business has been prepared. Example of the format that we're going to use is as um, you can see here. So we have an illustration of XYZ Limited, and we are preparing a statement of taxable income. In the statement of taxable income, we are determining the taxable income. Then after that, we, we multiply the, tax, the taxable income by the rate of tax, determine the tax liability. Now, in this method, the first method, which is uh, starting from uh, starting with the net profit, which has been determined according to statement of profit or loss, we start with the net profit reported, which is this figure here. Then we add back disallowable expenses. These are also known as disallowable deductions or disallowable expenses. they are expenses which should not be deducted. But for uh, because the statement of profit or loss is prepared according to accounting standards, they may be expenses according to accounting standards. However, in taxation or according to Income Tax Act, they are not allowable expenses. Because of that, they are supposed to be added back in case they have been deducted according to income tax, according to um, accounting standards. Now look at the, the number of, I mean, uh, look at the expenses that we have. We have uh, uh, several examples that I've given you here. These are not exhaustive because there's a very long list that I've given um, in the video talking about allowable and disallowable expenses. We have given a list of so many expenses which are disallowable. But I've given few examples here for illustration purposes. The first expense which we add back in case it has been deducted is capital expenditure. And the capital expenditure here include all expenditure capital in nature, which are qualifying for investment allowances. They include the following, cost of capital assets, that is the cost of buying such assets, depreciation, amortization, ETC that is supposed to be added back in case it has been be subtracted in preparation of statement of profit or loss. Secondly, we have capital losses. These are losses in dispos on disposal of, of uh, non-current assets or capital assets. It's added back. Taxes paid. Remember uh, the illustration, uh, or the, the explanation I, of this I had already given in the the video explaining allowable and disallowable in, in expenses. So we have taxes and also expenses incurred in payment of taxes. All these are disallowable. So you can see the two there. Appropriation of profits, and these include provisions, reserves, dividends, among others. All the appropriations of profit are not allowable. Pension fund contribution, if the pension is non-registered, so pension fund contribution to a non-registered pension scheme, provident fund is not allowable, and this is an item. Fines and penalties are also not allowable. Any type of fine or penalty that may have been incurred by the business is not allowable. And if a business has charged any fine and penalty in the statement of financial position, such are added back here, as you can see here. Non-trade bad debts is another one. These are bad debts which were not allowable by the time they are written off. If, uh, uh, okay, non-trade bad debts are not allowable. So if in case they have been deducted, then we add them back. Increase in general provision for bad debts is the next one. Should also be added back because only increase in specific provision for bad debts is allowable. In case increase in general provision for bad debts has been deducted, we add it back. Lastly, we have personal expenditure. 
all the types of personal expenditure is are supposed to be added back. That is to mean if they have been deducted and this a personal expenditure belong to an individual and not the business, then they're supposed to be added back. After we add this among others, meaning there may be many others which are not in this list. Remember the list I gave when I was uh, explaining allowable and disallowable expenses is a little bit longer than this. So such other expenses, I've not included all of them here because I just wanted to use few for illustration purposes. Now we get the total and that total should be added to uh, the net profit reported or net loss. After addition of disallowable expenses, we also add incomes not shown in the accounts and such incomes are taxable income. So taxable incomes which have not been included are supposed to be added at this point because they have not been added, but they are taxable. In essence, these are incomes which are not incomes according to accounting standards, but they are incomes according to Income Tax Act. Because of that, when pre preparing statement of profit or loss according to accounting standards, they are omitted. That is the reason now they're supposed to be added at this point. Such incomes include, or a good example to illustrate such incomes, are trading receipts or balancing charge. These are incomes according to Income Tax Act. However, they are not incomes according to account, uh, accounting standards. So we add such incomes at this point. Next, we are supposed to deduct or subtract non-taxable incomes which are shown in the account. These are non-taxable incomes which have been added. Non-taxable incomes which have been added. And such are incomes which are not supposed to be added for tax purposes. They are not supposed to be included for tax purposes. Therefore, in case they have been included in the statement of profit or loss, then we are supposed to deduct them at this point. Such ex example of such expenses which we deduct include uh, profit on sale of assets, profit on sale of shares and other investments, shares and investments. Profit on sale of shares or sale of investments, foreign investment incomes. And when I talk about foreign investment income, this is to mean uh, in uh, interest received from a foreign country or dividend received from a foreign country, dividend income and interest income received from a foreign country. We have dividends with final withholding tax is also allowable, uh, uh, non-taxable. And such which is not non-taxable, we don't add them back. If they were added, we subtract them. Dividend with a final withholding tax should not be included together with other incomes when determining the, in the taxable income. That is why we deduct it. Other capital gains should also be deducted. Then we have other incomes with final withholding tax should not be added. Apart from dividends with final withholding tax, we, we have other incomes which have uh, final withholding tax. And such incomes should be deducted at this particular point. Lastly, we have tax refunds. Then all this, we add them all together and then deduct them from the amount we have up there, the net profit or loss, uh, which has been reported. After that, we are supposed to deduct allowable but omitted expenses. These are expenses which are allowable, but in preparation, preparation of a statement of profit or loss, they have not been deducted. In essence, these are expenses which are expenses according to Income Tax Act, but they are not income, expenses according to the accounting standards. And that is why accounting standards have not included them in determination of taxable profit, of, of net profit. Now it is included in determination of, of the taxable profit through subtraction. Example of such income expenses, which are supposed to be deducted 
because they are allowable, but they have not been deducted, include uh, investment allowances and any other specific expense which is allowable but has not been deducted, omitted from the statement of profit or loss are now supposed to be deducted at this particular point. After making all these adjustments, what we come up with is adjusted taxable income or loss. Adjusted taxable income or loss is a figure which we are supposed to multiply by the rate of tax to determine the tax payable for a given period. Now to determine the tax payable for this period, we will multiply the taxable income by the rate of tax so that we are able to get the, the tax payable. Now that means that tax payable or tax liability is determined as taxable income multiplied by the rate of tax. That is the, the, the formula for determining the tax payable or the tax liability for a business. That is the first method. In the second approach, we are starting with the gross profit of the business. If we are starting with the gross profit, it means we must determine the gross profit as the sales minus the cost of sales or revenue minus the cost of revenue. That is given, giving us the gross profit. This approach is therefore used in a situation whereby financial statements have not been prepared. For example, when we have been provided with a trial balance or we are provided with a list of balances, then we are going to use such list of balances to construct a statement of taxable income. This statement of taxable income reflect the preparation of statement of profit or loss. But when we are talking about allowable expenses, we are only going to determine, deduct expenses which are allowable according to the act. As compared to what accounting standards could have done, we, we are going to have different types of expenses deducted compared to the type of expenses that accounting standards consider as expenses for determination of a statement of, of net profit in the statement of profit or loss. Now, looking at the format that is being adopted by the time we are starting with the gross profit, that we start with the gross profit as the first item. Gross profit, as I've said, is revenue minus cost of revenue. Revenue minus, minus cost of revenue in some situation can be called sales minus cost of sales. After determining the gross profit, then we deduct allowable expenses. Again, here we have a very long list of allowable expenses. The list is available in my video, which is talking about allowable and disallowable expenses. And this list illustrates or this list enumerate a lot of expenses which are allowable or which are not allowable according to Income Tax Act of Kenya. The examples that I'm going to use today for the purposes of this format include stationary, salaries and wages, office expenses, investment allowances. These are some of the examples of allowable expenses. So we are supposed to deduct the total of that from the gross profit. After that, we add other taxable business incomes, which have not been included. So we add these taxable business incomes to the gross profit. They include foreign exchange gain realized, reduction in provision for bad debts, discounts received, insurance recovery on revenue items, among others. So you realize this list is again, not exhaustive. And if you want an exhaustive list, you can have a look at the, my video, which is talking about allowable and disallowable expenses is available also. 
if we add this taxable business income, we are going to get a figure which is called uh, adjusted taxable business income. Then to the adjusted taxable business income, we are going to add other taxable but non-business income. These are incomes which are associated with this business, but not coming from the operations of this business. For example, we have rental income. If a bit the business has rental properties, we have interest income. In case the business has invested in debentures or has issued some loan, so they are earning interest, then we have interest income. That is in case the interest income is taxable. And then we may have other investment income like dividend income, which is taxable and so on. Then if we add this other taxable non-business income, which is this figure here, then what we are going to now get is the adjusted total taxable income. This adjusted total taxable income include business income and non-business income, but associated with the business. We determine the adjusted taxable total income. The adjusted taxable total income is multiplied by the rate of tax so that we can be able to determine the tax payable or the tax liability for that particular period. Therefore, the tax liability or the tax payable by this business in a given period is equal to total adjusted taxable income total adjusted taxable income multiplied by rate of tax. Right. That is now how to determine the tax liability of a business using these two approaches. The first approach is told you is beginning with the net profit and the second approach begins with the gross profit. Thank you.